With this movie, we begin another very important concept, but very useful thing in Anime Studio, and that is working in 3D space. Now, you may be thinking, I thought this was just a 2D animation program, and you're right. It's created to create those really specific two-dimensional looks or flat looks, but with some depth of field. Walt Disney Company back in the 1920s and 30s pioneered the deep camera field 2D animation where they could go ahead and defocus foreground elements, but it always had that two-dimensional look. We can do that with this program, but the only way we can do that is by replicating 3D space. Now don't confuse this with something like Maya or Lightwave uh, or even Shade or Poser. Those also think in 3D spaces, but they actually construct different types of objects for that 3D space. As I've mentioned in one of the opening movies, you can import 3D content into this program, but anime is kind of funny. It treats it as a 2D object that you can move backwards and forwards in 3D space instead of actually thinking of it as a 3D object. So let's put this into play and start working with it and see how we can kind of define some of these things. I have created a layer that I simply named square one. And I'm going to duplicate this layer so I don't have to redraw the shape by simply clicking on the new layer, but it has the plus sign for the duplication. I'll click that twice and we've got now three layers, square one, two, and three. Since square three is highlighted, I'm going to move to my translation tool and just move this over to the side. Likewise, I'll highlight layer three and drag this over to the other side. Keyboard shortcut Q for select shape. Let's change this to something like yellow. Guess I better select it first. There we go. On layer three, I'm going to change that, oh gosh, you can tell I'm an artist, to a complementary color of purple. So we've got purple, white, and yellow going on here. Well, that's nice, but what do we do now? Let's push these into 3D space and build a little structure that we can rotate a camera around and really see this is the case. Now, you might be asking, now, I'm not sure how you mean to use 3D space. If you do an animation where you've got a car speeding past a fence, but beyond the fence is buildings, and beyond the buildings is mountains or cloud, those travel to different speeds. We're used to seeing that type of interaction. Creating 3D space in anime allows you to quickly replicate those real-world interactions while doing 2D type of animation. So now that I've got these three layers, we're going to be using our layers tools in ways that we haven't used them before yet. The first thing I want to do is to go ahead and uh, move this purple square back, but instead of using the shape draw or translate tool, I'm going to use the layer translation tool. And I'll just drag this back right in front of the white cube. Likewise, I'm going to select the second one, the yellow square, and do the same thing and drag that back through there. So they've all lined up. Well, let's go ahead and change this and make it a little more friendly to working in 3D. To do that, we'll come down to the display options we have over here right next to it, and we've got multiple views or multiple ways we can divide the workspace, and I'm going to pick the four-way or the quad view. We're immediately presented with four identical views, and that's not particularly helpful, so let's change that. The way you select a view is by simply clicking your tool in that view pane. This little gray area moves around it and lets you know that it's highlighted. It looks like an inset. Well, since I have a very fragile mind, I try to do things the same way so that I know each time I look at one of these multiple views which view it is. Some programs have little little helps that tell you top view over here or something, this doesn't. So I do it the same way every time so that I have consistency and knowing what I'm looking at. This top view, I'm going to come up to view, direction, and it's the direction of the camera, or the direction you're viewing from, and I'll say top. This lower right hand one, but this won't be a surprise, I'm going to the right view, and on this left one, I'll do the left view as well. So now we have left view, right view, and top view. This funny little shape, as we learned in the introduction to uh, this working arrangement, is a little eye with this arrow coming out of it. You can't tell unless you're just right up on top of it with your, your viewport and zoom into that somehow. So we just know that we're looking at these shapes in the left view here, which corresponds to what we see going on right here in our regular camera view. Let's change some of these elements. We align them with the layer tool. I happen to have the square two layer selected now. So I'm going to select the rotate layer X. From the front view, think back to the good old days of math when you worked with graphs. Remember how the X 
item was always on the bottom and the Y item was always on the left side. That's the same in this program. The X axis always runs horizontal. The Y axis always runs vertical. And the Z axis comes right from the object to you, the viewer, the camera. And that's how anime thinks about the 3D space. So I'm going to select the rotate X layer. And this is when I'm going to want to use the numbers up here. I could click in the window and drag, but for these purposes, I'm going to be very precise. I'm simply going to enter 90 degrees. I want this to rotate one quarter of the way around a circle. From the top view, we see that now we can see the whole square. It has in fact rotated, but in the, the camera view right now on the left side, we're only seeing the very, very edge of it. So I'm going to grab my layer tool now, the translation tool, keyboard shortcut one, by the way, for that. I'm actually going to drag this down like I'm making the floor of a cube. And now we can see that space a little bit better. Now for the square layer three, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees using the X tool. I'll enter that value up there, 90. And now it too has rotated. But you can see it's not lining up because it's rotating right at its center. So as compared to the white original square, we've got some misalignment going on. And we'll fix that in our next movie.